Come on, son, 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 son. <laughs> Grab the yells on the track. <laughs> Rock and roll. Come on, send the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ed Lover. My girl, Angel Ray, is back with me again. Hey, all right, what's this up? is all being brought to you by cigarsinternational.com. Don't forget to go to cigarinternational.com. And at the end of your checkout, right before you check out, they'll say promo code put Ed 10 off. The number 10, not T E N. Ed 10 off for 10% off your entire purchase. All right, join us in the studio now. One of the most successful uh, female groups of all time. Absolutely surpassing the Supremes, which a lot of people thought could never be done in the history of music. This is the history of music. In the history of music, there's been a lot of female groups. You had SWV that sold a lot of records. You had Total sold a lot of records. In Vogue, Jade, Brownstone. The list goes on and on and on. It all kicked off in the early 60s by a, a young man who went to Detroit to start his own company by the name of Barry Gordy, who wrote a lot of records for Jackie Wilson back in the days, and he made publishing money off of that. Then he started his own company called Motown. He, he found a couple of young ladies that had sang together in a group called the Prime Mets. With the Primes eventually <laughs> became the Temptations, and the Prime Mets was Diane Ross and Flo Ballard. They got Mary Wilson, got together. They knew each other from high school, knew Mary could sing, knew Flo could sing. Flo had that Mary J. Blige gutty, gutty bottom sound that was just really amazing. And Diane could sing, and she had this nasal, high-pitched, sexy tone to her. Barry put them together, started the Supremes. The Supremes went on to do amazing things. It took a long time for the Supremes to get a hit. But once they got a hit, they stayed on the pop charts like consistently throughout their whole career. And at one point, they were the best-selling girl group of all time, of any female group that ever sang. Nobody could match the numbers of the Supremes. Then in the late 90s, early 2000s, here comes a young bunch of females out of Houston, Texas, that goes by the name of Destiny's Child and eventually outsold the Supremes to become the number one girl group of all time. And joining us in the studio is an original member of that group, Destiny's Child, Miss Latavia Robeson. Welcome to the hey. Thank Welcome you. To the Come Woo. on, son. Thank you. How are you, my love? How are you today? I'm wonderful. Let's 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 start at the very, very beginning of Destiny's Child. What were you doing? How did you get involved with music? We want to know everything about you. Okay, well, um, the one thing that people didn't know about me is that um, I already had a, a career okay. um, initially. Um, and the way that I got my audition was through my my modeling agency. Okay. I had been doing commercials. I had been aspiring to be an actress and do everything like that. I had been doing, I had done like maybe eight or nine careers. I was the face for Just For Me. Ended up being that for like 10 years. Really? Yes. As a little girl? Yes, as a little girl. Just for um, me. <laughs> yes. Pulled, hey. Just for me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> when, we, when we post this podcast, we're going to make sure we put a picture of you on a box of Just For Me. Right. You have got to provide that. Go so ahead and do funny. it. Oh, my gosh. I got it. That. I got it for you. Okay. So you're doing, you're, you're doing your acting and you're doing commercials. How did you remember those lines being so young? Like if you're doing a commercial at that at that age? Well, it's just something my mom used to always say that she could tell me that if I can go to McDonald's, I just remember I would never take a script into the room or anything like that when it came time for me to audition for uh-huh. you know, a commercial or anything like that. So my mom was always like, Okay, my child has a gift. So she didn't hesitate when it came time when, you know, through my modeling agency, Sherry Young in Uh Houston, I got the audition. I went there. I wasn't just this big singer or anything like that. They just, I guess, knew that I was an entertainer. Okay. And I auditioned and I got called back. Wow. And, And you just did a lot of commercials, eight or nine different commercials. Were you interested in singing at the time, or that's something that came later? I always loved singers, and I wanted to be a singer. But I was like, "Ooh, that ain't me. I'm. Oh, I ain't that. Ain't that person." 
But my mother put me in vocal lessons. Okay. Once I made my audition for the group through my modeling agency. And I started basically kind of learning how to sing. Okay. So what were you supposed to do for the group first? First, I was a, I was <laughs> I was a dancer. Then I became a rapper, like kind of hype master person. Like, cause, so Destiny's Child was gonna have dancers slash rappers. I, well, I was the rapper. Okay, so they're gonna have a rapper in the group. I. Who are the original ladies that that were in the group at that time? It was myself, um, Beyonce knows, of course, um, Tamar Davis, um, who's going to do a lot of plays for, you know, sang with Prince for so many years. Um, it was my two cousins. Um, they were dancers. We had Millicent Lede, who was like a, a hype master. And like it was like, I don't know, it was maybe like eight of us. Really? Yes. And what was, right. the, what was the name of the group then? When we first started, it was girls' time. Girls' time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So it's it's eight and nine of y'all, and uh, Kelly wasn't in the group yet. Not at that time. Latoya no. wasn't in the group. Yet. No. So you knew uh, B before all of them. Then. Yes, we actually um, we I met her the first day that I went to audition. Okay. We were sitting in the we auditioned together. Okay. In, was in it the same. no school together? None of that. You didn't know. From a can of paint. No. No. That was the first day that I so met So you her. audition, and then they tell you, all right, here you are. You're going to dance and rap. And had you been rapping? Did you know anything about hip-hop? Uh, no. I was, <laughs> I, look, I was just this kid that just likes to be, look, battling the little girls across the street and shit. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. Me and my cousins, we going to kill y'all. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you know how you used to do the diss stuff? You know you <laughs> Used to used to rank on people back right. in the day. We used to do out. That's what I was doing. Okay. But my mother set me up, and I had my modeling that I was doing, and through that, okay. that's how I and got. Then you got the audition for Destiny Child. Yes. How did your mother find out that they were looking for somebody? Through the modeling agency. Oh, so the modeling agency sent you. Yes. So Matthew con- contacted the modeling agency to try to look for other girls. Um. No. There was another set of managers. Um, these for th- girls' time. For these, it was three women. Okay. That that said that they wanted to have a group of young girls of all different nationalities and everything like that, and they wanted, you know, to try to make them pop. Who was hot then? Who? What girls' group was you listening? In to? Vogue. Okay. You know that. You know those in Vogue. Um. I don't even think at that time it wasn't TLC at that point in time. No, but it was like it was like in Vogue was like one of our main. Though that was the group. The, yes. Yeah, because they yes. sing they motherfucking ass. Oh my goodness! They know two ways about hmm. that, and they hmm. were and they weren't uh, a natural group of women that grew up together. They were put together by a producer. Yes, I mean I I, I don't know if some of them knew each other. They but, didn't know each um, other at all. But it None just doesn't. That show later on, didn't it? Bitches start arguing. They was like, it did. Uh, see, <laughs> see, <laughs> see, they got to see that. Hey, see, so you know how I get. I you know, know her, but some I bullshit know that, that always right. end up that, coming up. I know the bitch, but I don't know the bitch like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Not like you, my cousin and shit. So, right. how did, so how did how did you guys go from eight girls down to the four? Well, what ended up happening is. Um, Electra Records, um, Black Expo in um, Houston was something that was really huge. And um, Daryl Simmons saw us perform at the Black Expo. Before you go on, Daryl Simmons is one of the (laughs) most prolific songwriters in the history of recorded music. You're talking about Babyface and L.A.'s partner. Yes. When it came down to writing a lot of those songs. like A lot of that pin game belonged to Babyface, but a lot of that music... And an orchestration came from Daryl Simmons. Most of them hits that you love that Babyface did, Daryl Simmons had something to do with it. Now, go ahead. That it, it was something so amazing. Um, it was Black Expo in Houston, and he saw us perform. And then we all did, eight of y'all. Uh, well, at that point in time, it was six. Okay, so what happened to the other two? They fell. Who, who, who's the two that got? Hey, I was too damn young to know about any of that. I don't know what the hell <laughs> who happened. Who's the two that weren't there anymore? I, I, I guess it, Millicent and um, I guess Ashley. Um, okay, so it's six of y'all now. Yes. And you rapping now, or you are you I, singing at this I, point? I, I'm a rapper. I'm. There's nothing about me that is singing. Okay. Half a word. All right. 
Um, but we were just a group. We performed, you know, together and all of that. And we go to we go to Atlanta. We come to Atlanta, and we start rehearsing. And we rehearsed and we performed for Electra Records and we got a deal with Electra Records. Okay, now who's managing at the time? The two same three ladies or have Matthew? It, the same, the same three ladies. Okay, how did fuck that, did y'all that, go from them three the, ladies? Well, well, not the same three ladies. One of the ladies. Me being that young, I don't know you what don't the know hell what the actually ended up happening. <laughs> like I don't, but I know that at this point in time, it is Mr. Knowles and Miss Andretta Tillman. Okay, so. How old are we talking here? Okay, so this was after Star Search. So I was 13. Okay, so you did Star Search? Yes. With at, with Girl Time? Yes. So there's actual video of one, you. Two, one, two, check. <laughs> no, no, that, no, no, but look, but that's how that's how the like that's how the whole no, that's how the whole performance started. I was, yes, okay. I was on Star Search, so we can see this motherfucking shit on Star. Yeah, yeah. yeah and look at my executive producer Krista <laughs> right now trying to find. The oh girls my gosh, no! On Star Search, very dope. Okay, so now y'all in Atlanta, y'all get signed to. Uh, Electric Records. Yes. Did y'all sign to Electric Records, or did you sign to a production company that signed to Electric we, Records? We 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 had a production deal. Okay. Who was Matthew Knowles? Through no through Daryl Simmons. Through Daryl Simmons. Yes. Okay. So y'all signed the silent Darryl. partner. Yes. Right. Daryl signed y'all to Electric. Yes. So when the money come, it gotta go Daryl and then y'all. Uh, what, damn it, Ed. <laughs> Shit. You was what fourteen, right? 13. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. What the fuck I know was. now, but yeah, damn. You know, you know, <laughs> You're just happier than a pig and shit to get a record deal, right? So you hear Electric Records. Sylvia Rohn is the uh, president of Electric yes. Records. Big shout out to Sylvia Rohn. Yes. Love I Sylvia, Sylvia. Rohn. So how did y'all go from six to four? When did Latavi- Latoya, and you all Latavia, I'm sorry. When did Latoya and, and Kelly come? Ooh. When did when did <laughs> Kelly come? When did Kelly and, and fucking Latoya come? I um, Because was... they not on Star Search. No, Kelly was on Star Search. All right, so let's go back to that. When the (laughs) fuck did Kelly come? Kelly came, um, I was in elementary school, and I was in the third grade, and I met Kelly in the fourth grade. Okay. And um, we became friends, and I was like, hey, let's become friends. (laughs) I used to hear her, you know, sing all the time, and we were playing Barbies, and she was singing Whitney Houston. She loved Whitney Houston down. Okay. And um, she was singing um, I'm Your Baby Tonight. Okay. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you need to come and try out for the group that I sing with. She did. Matthew liked her. That's. And this is before Star Search? This is after Star Search. Oh, so Kelly didn't come to ask. Well, no, actually. Oh, Ed, damn. Oh, you know I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> this is what people want to know. Yes, no. Kelly was. We were Star Search. This happened before Star Search. Okay, so Kelly yes. gets in before Star Search. Yes. You guys rehearsing your ass off. You go do Star Search. You went on Star Search. No, we lose on Star Search. Y'all lost on Star Search. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't remember seeing that? That's like on all of we the cried. Destiny Child We probably specials. never cried like, so much in our lives yeah. before Star Search. Who they lose to? Angel? A group, no. I don't even A remember A group called Skeleton was. Crew. Were they white? They were, you know that yes, they, was they white, were called. Right? They were some grown men. They were called Skeleton, uh, Skeleton Crew. You know that. Show, and they right? had, they, <laughs> oh, they had a song called, um, I think, "Sentimental Fool." You and, remember this shit? This shit. Is but but guess what? Because because I love alternative music, I actually like the song. So I still, okay. it's in my, it's in my playlist. But that was like one of the most heartbreaking things that you could have gone through yes. at that point. You know, so that's definitely gonna stick with you as a kid. Yes. Like y'all, like getting ready, yes. y'all holding hands. We and it's cried like, forever. One, two, three. Yep. Nope. Y'all Me lost. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta so, learn how to lose yeah. good in order to know <laughs> how to win, though. You do. We you cried definitely cried forever. Do. Okay, so y'all a good life lesson, though. Right? Yes. A, a great life. La- life Nothing can't lasts be forever. You better learn how to lose a little bit. So y'all <laughs> move on. Y'all sign to Daryl Simmons. Is it still six or is it now down to four? It, at this point in time, it's still six. It's still six. Yes. When did LaToya come? LaToya came after. Uh, well, LaToya was actually there. But it didn't happen right then after Star Search. But before we went to, before we came to Atlanta, Latoya came then. 
okay. because Kelly was in the group during Star Search, and then right after that, that's when that happened, once we got back. Once y'all got back. So when yes. y'all came to Atlanta, was it six or four? It When we came to Atlanta as the Dolls, it was four. When did y'all change your name to the Dolls? We were we were Destiny's Child. I mean, I mean at the end, we were Girls Time, Girls time on um, Star Search. Uh-huh. Then after that, we changed our name to Cliche for a little short minute, and then we became... Destiny and then Destiny Shaw. Um, we we just went through a whole lot of different name changes. Okay. Oh my gosh. So did Daryl Daryl Simmons give you the name Destiny's Child or did y'all make it up yourself? No, we were the dolls while we were with um Daryl Simmons. What do you mean while you were with Daryl Simmons? How long no. were you with Daryl Simmons? Well, maybe about three years or so. Okay. Maybe. Any records come out under the name the dolls? No. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. This is Daryl fucking Simmons. This I was a child, but we were children, and, you know, that was the adults and the people that were the producers and all of that. Okay. That that was going but on. But you did record, you recorded music. Oh, we, were, we recorded music. As but, adults. But we were with a production, we had a production deal through... Daryl Silent Simmons. Silent Partner Productions uh-huh. with Elektra. Okay. And once everything... Once that didn't happen, then there was nothing until now. So did uh, did Electric drop you, or did they drop the Silent Partner deal? I was told a lot of different things. What were you told? I was just told that don't nobody want to deal with no kids. Oh, okay, because you were really, really young. Yeah. Okay, so then but, that deal fell apart, and the deal fell apart with with uh, Daryl Simmons. Yes. So did y'all go back to Houston at that point? Yes. Because I want people. The reason why I'm asking so many intricate small questions about it is yeah, because you're asking me a lot yeah because i want people <laughs> to to understand your journey and i don't want them to think that your journey wasn't a long and, and tedious one before destiny child blew up i want them to know that you went through some shit that you oh. did this and that and that and this and this because people nowadays think that i'm in a group this shit supposed to happen tomorrow no you know you you're talking about years over and over yes. from from a kid, so, and then you guys became Destiny, and then became Destiny's Child. Correct. How did you get signed to? Uh, what did y'all end up on Columbia or Sony? Uh, Columbia. Columbia. Yes. How did you guys get signed to Columbia? And how old were you when you got signed to? Columbia? When we got signed to Columbia, we were about we were fifteen. I think okay. Like fifteen. Um, we had continued after the deal fell through with Electra. We continued to rehearse and everything, and we still would go and perform everywhere. Mm-hmm. Management had us everywhere, performing everywhere, even in the. <laughs> the open of a clam. Huh? I mean, damn. At a car wash. <laughs> Shit, you <laughs> better be you better be singing wash. at the car wash. <laughs> but we ended up um, falling upon um, the the right position at the being in the right space at the right time. And um, Teresa Lababera White saw us perform. She was an A and R person at Columbia. She heard us. She liked us. And hence the Beyonce, you shouldn't have been singing. You shouldn't have gone swimming and all that. He embarrassed us so bad we had to Who said that? Management. <laughs> <laughs> Who that, that she shouldn't have gone swimming. Well we all went swimming and we knew that we had to perform and you know basically have an audition the next day. Okay. And we swam and people have allergies and we kinda didn't sound. Yeah, but, you got nasally. Pro- but you got the deal. Sounding nasally a yes. little bit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you got the deal anyway? We had to perform again. Then some days went by. We were asked to perform again. Then we were asked to go to New York. We were asked to perform in front of everybody. And then, yes, we did end up getting the deal. Oh, but not not off the first time that y'all performed sounding. Uh, like, uh, no. sound, all y'all sound like a group of little Keith Sweats, huh? I don't I know. Wanna, I oh, know. no. I want to feel you. <laughs> <laughs> so it took a couple of times for, for them to convince It did. It like, and people, be, people really think that this shit is easy. They think that it happens overnight. No, it took us over eight years to get a record. Oh, wow. wow. So it's over eight years. And then it finally happens. You're excited. Yes. Who's the first person they put you in the studio with to record when you were at Columbia? We the first person that we um got in the studio we recorded with Vincent Herbert. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yes, nice. T- is that Tamar's husband? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Big old, love, big love, skinny, love. Fat, skinny Vincent. Oh my God! I don't know what he want to be. He, I, you know what? Like a 
pit bull, a skinny nigga with a pit bull head. <laughs> I love you, Vince. I know him his whole life. I can say that. I know him very well. My God. Love him down. Um, we did No, 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 the slow version, the part one version. Oh, okay. I love that. Vincent Herbert wrote No, No, No. And then Good we... Good goddamn. And... Vincent Herbert wrote No, No, No? Yes. Does he own the publishing for No, No, No? Well, call Shit, it. You said don't. you know him. <laughs> That's where that fat motherfucker got that money from. That Get out of here, like Ed. Shit. Right. <laughs> that record sold. Y'all had to do a million on that record and by then itself. We, the, the single did that. And, and why, you know, why Clef did the, the single. Yeah, this is the yeah. remake. Yes. And, 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 and I just I just saw no. him like last weekend. Oh, my gosh. It's been great. Like it, that's, that's amazing. Like 20 years later. Right. Like it's, it's has it been twenty years? It's been over twenty years, actually. Good wow. God Almighty! Wow. So your first single comes out the gate. You got your no, 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 no. Your yes, 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 yes. Why <laughs> Clef comes in, blazes the fucking remix. Y'all sell over a million records. How are you feeling as a as as a human being at that point when all this hard work has been put in? Um, you took vocal lessons. Yes. You auditioned. You got it. You're in. It's all for y'all. Y'all sell a million fucking records out of the gate on your first record. Well, the way that I think that I can speak for all of us, actually, I think that we all felt more than blessed because we prayed together. We all of that. Like I said, people always try to say this shit about like, you know, all of that. They this, 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 whatever. No, we were friends. Okay. I don't care what nobody says. We were. We prayed for it. Everything that we, we prayed for it together. We wanted to have the success together. Mm -hmm. And that's what ended up happen, happening. Like, God is great. Right. And people just think, oh, these little girls, oh, they just ain't had nothing. No. When, oh, when, they, when, oh, 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 overnight success. During, uh, the, no. during the breakup, when, when um, you and LaToya decided that you wanted to be smarter and business about your money. Um, you didn't like the way you were being treated. You didn't like what kind of payouts that you were getting for somebody that was selling a lot of records. What bothered you the most that people said about you? Um, damn, microphone, excuse me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what bothered me the most and still bothers me the most to mm -hmm. this day is that people say that I'm bitter. And I just don't understand why. Why am I bitter? Me having a part with that group and starting it is one of the best things that has ever happened to me in my life. Mm -hmm. I done had some fucked up shit that didn't happen to me. And that is not one of them. So for, for people to tell me that I'm bitter, I just don't get it. And I don't care. That's their business. People are entitled to their own opinion. But I know exactly where I am with that situation. And that's why I've told you before. That's why I wrote my book. Right. On a pre Let's talk about your book for a minute. What is your book about and what journey do you take us through with your book? The the journey that is taken um that that I'm taking people through on my book is the journey of my life. And yes, it is a tell all book. It is about my life. Um I definitely speak about my my time in the group, but I'm also somebody that has lived I've lived life. I've lived life out the spotlight. So only imagine what that's been like. Right. Um, and trying to hide things, you know, that. From people? Did you try to hide things from people? Of course. What, what's the biggest thing you think you try to hide from people? Uh, about, about, um, about my substance abuse. Okay. When did, when did you go through a substance abuse? I, I started going through that um, in my early 20s. And, you know, it had more, a lot of people think that it's because of the group and all that. But no, I had a life before that group. Okay. I, you know, I dealt with things with my father. I dealt with molestation. I dealt with things like that. And I was trying to suppress a lot of stuff. So I started living my life. And no, I didn't choose the best life for myself. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I wrote about it is because I think that I can, if I can help one person, like, get through some of the stuff, that ain't the best way to go through it, but Angel, it happens. Angel and I have, have been doing this podcast for a minute, and we always talk about the fact that African-American people in this country do not yep. like, they don't keep their mental health. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. As, you as, you as, hit me as, one as more time, as, microphone. <laughs> this microphone is beating as, my ass over here. As much as we keep our physical health. 
Yeah. We worry about our physical health so much, we neglect our mental health. Absolutely. And when we're going through something, we don't like to say, I need to see a psychologist. Mm-hmm. I need to see a psychiatrist. I need therapy. Because yes. therapy is taboo for us. White people can go mm-hmm. to therapy all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? How you doing, Jim? Great. How's your therapy going? It's going fantastic. Mm-hmm. A black person's not going to say, how's your therapy going? They're going to go, I that motherfucker help. crazy. Right. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to see a psychiatrist. That bitch is a nut job. Don't yeah. fuck with her. She nutty. And our mental health is, for us, is sometimes even more severe Yes. than it is yeah. for white folks because yes. we live in a state where most of us come from a place where we know people that was super young that got killed. I've seen people killed right in front of me. I've been standing next to friends that have gotten shot. Hmm. When they go to war and they come back and that happens, they call that post-traumatic stress yep. disorder. And hmm. a lot of us go through it and don't even know. And we don't <laughs> even know it. Mm-hmm. Do you think you went through a certain amount of post-traumatic stress disorder in your life? You know... In my life, yeah. yeah. Are you because asking me? You, are you, you asking? Are you, that you dealt asking with me? Station and you and you suppressed it. Are yeah. I about to say, are you asking about that group? Or are you asking me about in life? No, I'm asking you about your life. This is about. Oh, Latavia. in my life, this this podcast is about Latavia Robinson. Okay, well, this shit in ain't my about life, Destiny's child. okay. We, so, I don't okay, give so a let's, fuck let, okay, about well, let, well, let's okay, you. well, let's not talk that. Okay. So, did I go through post traumatic stress? It, no, I didn't. I was just going through life. Okay. That group just happened to be a part of my life that I was already going through when things started going south with me with the substance abuse and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, um, the lack of my relationship with my father and, you know, things like Why that. Why was there a lack in the relationship with your father? You or, know or what? Him, or have you spoke to your mom about it? What was it? I do. I, As an adult... You just don't even I, know now. You can't put a finger on No, it. I like you, sometimes you think that you speak about things and then people say things and then it's really nothing. You know, they, they, as an adult and, and I'm substantially older than you, <laughs> there's going to be some shit you just ain't going to know. Yeah. There's things yeah. about my mama. I don't know. She will not reveal. And <laughs> my mother's life is so interesting. <laughs> my mama's is too. You know, that I've been trying <laughs> to get my mother to open up and I've said to her many times, Big Vi, because my mother's name is Viola. I had a big vibe. You need to write a book. And she says some things are just too fucking painful mm-hmm. for her to But you to know relive. what, though? That's crazy. I tell my mom that all the time. My mom is like a, what, a four or five time cancer survivor. She was the middle child. She um, raised all of her brothers and sisters. And still, she's like the big sister of everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even being the middle child, she's the one that takes care of everyone. And my mom's a family matriarch and also. So I feel like, you know, I can, you know, family members, you can support your parents all you want, but to know what they've gone through to to walk in their shoes, you will never imagine, you know, some of the stories that my mom has told me, I just be like, my heart hurts for her. And and she's, you know, just this very strong person. And it's just, you know, we just keep it moving. how How old is your mom right now? My mom, oh, Jesus, Ed, <laughs> Christ, my mother is um 58. All right, shout out to your mom. Hey, sure, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to your mom. To your mom, how old are you right now? Damn, Ed, shit. <laughs> I am proudly 35. Okay, hey. so your mom being 58 and you being 35, your mother had you pretty young. 23. 23 years yes. old. That is, you, you have brothers and sisters? No, I'm an only child. You're only child figures. All right, you and this <laughs> motherfucker right here. You and Miss Krista Hayes. So your mom went through a lot. Yes, like, she you, did. You, you know, you don't understand, like, probably half of. Yeah, and then being on the and then being on the road with us and being the the mother on the road, being our chaperone, right, and being chosen by the mothers and being chosen by management and everything. I was with my mother all the time, mm-hmm. so the simple fact that there were things that were going on in our private life, it made it harder for me on the road. Okay, than having to be on there with my mama too. Right, it's like it's like going to it's like going to uh, school and your mama is a teacher. Oh, <laughs> oh. No, you don't want to be in no school. You're like, oh, please, right. please transfer me. Oh. I got to see this bitch at home and when I'm in school. Like, fuck out of here. Lord, take me now. Yeah, take me now. So you been but through, the Lord kept me though. But you and you've been through some hmm. stuff, and and I think your book. Is going to be your testimony to everything it that is. you that you've been through. Your mom, 
Yes. Yes. How old? How old? Your child. Oh, oh my! I thought you said my mom. Is no, your I child. Say, I was about to say, Ed. I just told you. You said 58. Oh my, my! Yes, my daughter. She's um, she's three and a half. She'll be four August twenty first. Wow! Nice. Yeah, congratulations. Yes. Thank right you. How does it feel to be somebody's mama? It feels great to be somebody's mother. It feels great to be two people's mama. Um. You know, we've talked about it before. Uh-huh. Um, and I just, I just always keep that dear and close to me. Um, simple fact that I, you know, was five and a half months pregnant, and last year, and we're approaching that um, July fourth, actually. Okay. Um, is the day that I, like I say, I don't like to say I lose, I lost, but I gained my angel. So that's coming here. So it's, you never know how, like what what hands and what cards life is gonna deal you. Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta go. You just, you just gotta go with it. Like, yeah. what can you do? You gotta do, try to do the best that you can. And Absolutely. Keep, and keep your head on straight because yes. you know we we we've been there. I I've been there. Not even uh, not even five years ago where mm. I was at uh, job fairs. Mm. You know, because I couldn't find a job in radio. You know, just like fuck it. And people looking at me like, Ed, what are you doing here? You Ed Lovin. I'm like, I need to work. Yeah. You know, regardless, there's 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 uh, peaks and valleys of this business. Mm-hmm. And anybody who thinks it ain't, we think everybody's life is so much better than ours. And look at this person and look at that person and, and look at Puff and look at the. Let me tell you something. Biggie said it best. More money, more motherfucking problems. <laughs> Just had this conversation. We call my garage the garage. <laughs> that's that's where you go. We sit down and we talk about it. This one right look, that's why she did that right there. Uh-huh. I just said the more money, more problems. Literally, was that last night or the night before? I was just saying the last thing that you just said. I believe that, but a lot of people don't believe that. Well, because they think money is gonna make all their everything problems better. Away. Yeah. And I, what it what it actually does is shine a bigger light on your problems and it shines a light on the way people treat you. Hmm. They start treating you differently. And then here come family members you didn't even oh. fucking know you had. And then I know my mama, Big Vi. My mom, being the matriarch of the family, wants me to take care of every fucking body. Mm-hmm. And then my mom was giving my shit away. Well, your nephew was over here. He, <laughs> he, had, he had holes in his sneakers. I'm like, Ma, I just bought those sneakers. I left them here because when I come to your house and spend the night, I want to have a different pair of sneakers. If you can see, I got a whole fucking three, four outfits over here, Ma. Why would you give away my sneakers? We well, had holes in his sneakers. That's my brother's problem. That ain't my <laughs> fucking kid. I got my own kids to take care of. So you going through all of this shit with your family. Your, I loaned my brother money to buy a car. He act like it shit never happened. I loaned, you know, I loaned. To this day, my brother owe me money. I see this motherfucker. He never mentions the fact that he owes me money. So I just, I left it alone. You know, your friends start treating you different. Oh, Jesus. And, and, and let me tell That's you the worst. And, 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 and this is the then truth. they look at you like when you When you crazy. have nice shit, you can't treat my nice shit the way you treat you treated my bullshit. Hmm. Now, when you was coming over my house and I had that renter center furniture in there, motherfucker, do a backflip off of it if you want to. <laughs> but nigga, that... this rug is Persian. Uh, Take that, uh... that motherfucking shoes off look. when you step on my rug. What the, look, what the fuck is Persian? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> then you get, and, and, and Latavia, you, can, uh, you, can, you know this shit. Oh, now you all that now because you're a little Destiny Child yeah. shit. What <laughs> Lil. Why do people, Lip. whenever somebody want to disrespect you, don't they put little in front of your shit? Oh, always. that was the worst thing that used to, that <laughs> used to drive us crazy. We used to always say, like, why is it that, like, we're doing something, and even when we lost the deal with the lecture, and then we came back and we got to, you know, we got the deal with Columbia, and we got back out of school in seventh grade, then people again was like, mm, yeah, y'all, y'all little group, y'all little group. Like, it used to drive us crazy <laughs> because, like, we're like, no, y'all have no idea shit that we done been through like y- y'all little whatever we didn't ask y'all to come be a part of it nor we asked them to come and be a part of anything that y'all do but you ain't gotta you ain't gotta downgrade us or yeah, try that, try to that little is that little you put that little in then everything the happened oh i went to school with her oh my gosh they came <laughs> over to the volleyball games and then yep now everybody know you. Back then they didn't know you. Now they, you hot. Come on, Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Hey, all on. Hey. Oh my god. Let me Jones. tell you, that's the realest ever wrote for you real. Because everybody lie. come out the woodwork. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you explore in your book the 
disconnect. I don't want to say it was a breakup between you two in the group. The disconnect that happened. Do you explore that in the group? Um, the I definitely do because we were we were young kids we actually grew up together so it was i don't call it a breakup it's almost like a a marriage right a divorce. dissolving it's like a divorce right and it's really hard and people don't understand it and you know i get told a lot you know i don't even understand why you even care you wasn't doing this you wasn't this 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 how the fuck like, they know what you were right because everybody has an asshole and I'm gonna say that first. So they're yeah. entitled to their opinion. Yeah, if I like if I allowed that to dictate everything that was going on, I wouldn't have written a book and you know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you because I'd be feeling some kind of other damn way about a whole lot of stuff. Right. Right. You we, when I interviewed you before you told me that the uh when the when the relationship between Destiny's child started to dissolve it was based on you didn't, you felt like you weren't being compensated correctly. I mean, I'm just going to say that. That's that's a fact. Um, I'm going to leave that there, Mr. Lover. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm leave that there. That's a fact. Uh-huh. Um, but it's just that when you see things like, I've always been beyond my time. I've I've always been I've always had an old soul mm -hmm. and all of that. So I've always paid attention to things that was going on around me. And I pay attention to what people around me say. So I just started listening to things and I just started having my own head. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. It wasn't like any ill feelings with the girls or you know nothing like that. It was just like what is right is right. So since we can't be since we're not supposed to say anything let us do this. This is for my personal contracts and try to get a business manager for the group. That was the whole thing then. And then I like even me saying this, I know I understand your platform and all this stuff, but like, see, me talking to people like you that are willing to listen and then you understand. See, I get backlash for that kind of stuff. I get backlash for telling the truth. I get back, and, and it's just on, it's been my truth since I was 17 years old. Right. I'm about to be 36. And I've never changed my story. And I just really, I really hate that you can't, like, have your voice. And like I said, every time I speak about it, it's that I'm being bitter. Mm -hmm. It's that I'm, that I can't let it go. But like, you just asked me a question. Did you or did you not? Yes, I did. And had I not answered the question like you wanted me to, then you would have asked me more questions. Well, said, add another the, question, the simple yeah. fact that I didn't back down to I, answer your questions, I, I ain't scared or nothing. Question. Yeah. I got a question. Do you feel like um, when you were in the moment, um, you feel like things were just moving so fast once you guys got signed and everything started picking up that, the business end kind of got put on the back burner like it just kind of like took the, off when we got our record deal yeah well, like well, well i'm saying like you know later on you said you guys you felt like um you and latoya um felt like the business end wasn't right and you felt like y'all needed a business manager for the whole uh group do you feel like once y'all got the ball rolling that it was just so quick and y'all was just in the moment with everything else that the it's, business got put on the back burner. It's, it's not that we were in the moment and we put it on the back burner. It's just that at the same time, we were minors. Right. And so we needed our parents' signature to to do things. Okay. So um, I was never oblivious or anything to, you know, anything that was, that was going on. I had been seeing what was going on, but mm -hmm. with you know, my mother being someone that was on the road with us all the time. Mm -hmm. My mother had a, a job that she was trying to, you know, save too. So mm -hmm. my life outside of the other girls was different because my mother was on my my mother was employed. Right. So I couldn't say nothing to my mom. Right. And she was so trying to my, secure her best interest at that moment. And, not and her best thinking, interest was me, yeah. and my best interest was her, too. And right. then that's why I became, like, a, a head, but even between my mother and myself. Right. Mm. That, that's, that's really interesting. And add that to the fact that... <clears throat> um, add that to the fact that they're young. 
They're minors. Yes. Add that to the fact that mom didn't know the business. Yes. Right. This is her first go around. Yes. You got this first go around and your child sells a million fucking records right out the gate and you're employed by the by the people. So you're getting that check there and that check coming from mm-hmm. whatever from cut that ends. your child is supposed to get. You trying to keep the shit going because you don't know the business. You know what I mean? A lot of parents don't know the fucking business. They don't. We're, 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 <clears throat> we're people that when we get into the business, we we don't know the shit. Mm-hmm. We, we, we really don't know the shit. Even from my own experiences, when I first got to Hot 97 and they kicked the shit off, um, I knew a big part of the business from my days on MTV, but I had a manager at the time that was like, look, we going in, when this contract is over, we're going in and I'm asking them for 20% of what they make off of you during the commercial. Mm-hmm. He knew exactly what each commercial cost because I was the number one fucking morning show in the city, <laughs> even beating Howard Stern consistently. He knew what they were charging for commercials, so he would go in and say, at least give my client 20%. That's small change. You're still keeping 80. You understand? So when it comes to them, I'm a grown man, and I didn't really know the business like that. When it comes to them, these are children. Right. That's why they had the name Death's Knees Fucking Child, Mm -hmm. because they're children. So they don't know what's going on. So it's easy. It's so many loopholes and games that are played in this record business that you could not even wrap your fucking head around it. Oh, my goodness. You have no idea. It's your manager going in. Okay, I'll give you a little example. Here's your manager going in. Destiny's Child has to shoot a video for a new single. The manager is in control of that. The budget is given to them to get the video done. Now the manager, because he has a powerful group because they done sold a million records, I want to pick who I want to direct my girl's video. Mm-hmm. They don't know. They just want to get pretty and get in front and rehearse, and <laughs> they don't know that they have that power. So the so the manager goes in and he goes to say a hype Williams, right? Mm-hmm. Hype Williams says I charge, let's say a hundred thousand dollars. So the record company goes, well, they're a big group. This video has to be fantastic to take it to the next level. Let's give hype the hundred thousand dollars he wants. Hype gets the hundred thousand dollars, and Hype kicks fifty thousand dollars back to the manager for giving him the job, right. and they never even know the fucking shit yep. happens. Ed. That's how fucking filthy this <laughs> business. Can Get be. under the table, Ed, and go. I'm, I'm just a and and all people. You want to work with such and such and such a? Let me call my man Rodney Jerkins. He just did Brandy. She blew the fuck up. Rodney Jerkins comes in. I need one hundred and fifty thousand to do this new Destiny's Child song. Rodney gets that. The A and R gets back piece of that money under the table for getting Rodney the job. And mm-hmm. then the manager's like, Rodney, you ain't stepping in this studio till I get a cut of that motherfucking money. And guess who don't right. get the money? The right. artist. Right. <laughs> and then, right, here's the, and here's the dirty part, and Latavia can attest to this. Latavia, Beyonce, Kelly, and Latoya don't see a fucking dime until a record company recoups that $150,000 that, uh-huh. that went into their own A&R's pocket, yep. a piece of it, maybe 10 to 15, and their fucking manager took a cut of that shit too, okay? And it's charged back to them. Yep. So their money, I just speak for myself. Their I'm not saying no, I just speak for Latavia Roberson. <laughs> I know how this business works. I've been mm-hmm. in it long enough to know that when y'all were coming up, you were still big time record company. It wasn't so much as independents are they are now. Independents have been able to cut the record company out of their business. That's why you have a lot of independent guys like Chance the Rapper that's been offered oh. ten million that said, Fuck y'all. I'm yeah. making I'ma make ten million. I don't yep. want your ten At least million that'll now. be mine. Right. At least right. it'll be mine. You're gonna give me ten million, but you're gonna make sure you get the ten million back before I see a fucking dime. I'm never yeah. gonna recoup. So fuck that. I'd rather make my money, even if I don't make ten million dollars in one year. Hmm. I'm gonna right. make a million, two million, three million go every year for the next twenty years. Yeah, and it's gonna mm-hmm. be more than that bullshit ten million that y'all gave me in the first place. And that's Absolutely. that's that's how they roll. That's how they that's how they work. These young ladies. So in order to answer your question, her mom was oblivious to the business, mm-hmm. did not know anything, and this is what's keeping the lights on. So I'm right. quite sure when you when you and Latoya first said, hey. Some sh- this shit ain't right. Your mom's like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how that's how a fucking slave master keeps <laughs> slaves going. Uh-huh. They take your mama and put your mama in the big house and leave you in the field. And when you start bitching about, ma, this shit ain't right, they busting my ass in the field. Shush. 
You see them pants you got? Masa gave us those pants. Yeah. Am I right? Just read my book. <laughs> <laughs> tell me to tell us. We know what after all of this talking that we've done, Latavia, you still haven't said uh, the name of your book. Well, you know, I I I, I said something. It it is I am Latavia, but um, the the Le Papillon is something. It's it's a part of a chain of my books because I'm writing. I'm actually I'm actually writing three books. Okay. Um, my memoir is a three part series um because the way that i end my book is actually interesting and um even since the last time that i saw you i've just still been i know that it's supposed to be out but like i've been in my editing process and even with the editing and the editing even to read everything that i wrote i was taken back in like almost two weeks i almost kind of cried a little bit because i'm like and damn, I'm shit. like, damn, and you really wrote this. And like I told you, I didn't type. I didn't go and talk to nobody. I took my pen and my college rule paper, and I wrote my damn book. Oh, wow. I did not. Handwritten. Uh, yeah. When the last time we seen a handwritten memoir, huh? huh. Or anybody has done it, they're huh. usually written by, as told to. <laughs> well, I told you I have an old soul, and I mean that. Yeah, as told to such and such and such. So where is Latavia, Latavia Robeson right now? What does Latavia want to do? What's Latavia's goals? What's happening? What I am doing um, right now, I'm I'm really excited about, which, like I said, it's it's been harder than I even thought since the last time I talked to you. Having to, I, I am working with an editor, but to edit my book, I, I have to edit what the editor did too, because like I said, I'm not letting nobody do it. I have to do it myself too. That is, it, it's put a little whatever, but I don't feel some kind of way about it. I'm talking to some people still about my um, my preemie clothing line for sure. Okay. And um, my, um, my, my lingerie and bedding line still for sure. Okay. Um, one of the newest things that I've been doing. No, I like lingerie. Now. Oh, Ed, get out of here. Like get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, and the the biggest thing that I've been doing is I I've been I've been playing around in the studio doing something. Good. <laughs> How long has it been since you've been in the studio? Oh, it's been um it's been a long time and like I said, I like EDM music, I like alternative music and for me it, it's been the first time where I can hear even myself just singing things, just me doing it by myself and not getting somebody to do because I can't do the high notes because my voice is so deep and all of that stuff. I used to like get help but like I've actually just been challenging myself and just playing around and just trying to see what it is that I can do. And like I said, I like this new side of myself. I like just trying to explore and be somebody different than what everybody else thinks. Fuck what I'm supposed to yeah, fuck mm-hmm. that shit. Don't let nobody paint you. <laughs> Don't let nobody paint you. Don't let nobody paint you in the box. Yeah. You look fantastic. Well, thank you. How's your love life? Excuse me? How's your love life? Are you connecting anybody? Is a man in your life that I you love, love or a woman lo- in your I life? I love that you love. love. I, 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 Are you in a relationship? Because the guys that are listening to this podcast is going to want to know. Look, that. I'm going to take her to the swinger spot with me on the 23rd. Do oh, you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I can't. <laughs> only, only thing I can say, only thing I can say is I've been playing for a long time, but I've been saying for a long time. That I've been waiting for a long time for somebody like you. Okay. You got a, you got a little bit of motherfucking Tony Braxton in that throat, don't you? Yes, that raspy. Deep, yeah, that raspy shit is sexy, man. Get your ass back in the studio and make some music, Latavia Robinson. I appreciate you coming by. Thank today. you so much. You know, uh, I anytime. love to kick you know, it with I you. you. I love, I love, you love so the much. family over here. I love you so much, man. It's love been, you love back. Us. This is Come On, Son, the podcast as usual, man. Y'all uh, keep God first. Everything else will fall into place. Thanks to God's International for being the official title sponsor for Come On Son, the podcast. Don't forget when you check out, all right, make sure that you type in Ed 10 off. That's one zero O-F-F for 10% off your entire purchase that you buy online. Next time we'll talk to you, man. Come on, son. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Bye-bye. <laughs> Peace. This Ed Lover podcast is being done in conjunction with Cigars International. Make sure you check out CigarsInternational.com for all your cigar needs.
This episode of Come On, Son, the podcast is produced and engineered by co-executive producers Kimana Paulus and Krista Hayes. Recorded at Mean Street Studios in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, this is an official Loudspeakers Network podcast. This 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 network podcast.